everyone, Cherry here. You're probably wondering what the heck is happening right now, and I'm going to explain to you. I'm going to be talking about anime conventions. This is an anime convention story time video. I can't do an anime convention story time video without looking the part. I've got to have my cat ears, my big fat meaty cat paws, my bell, and my I Heart Anime shirt from when I was 12 years old in middle school from Hot Topic that my mom bought for me circa 2006. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about my experience speed dating at anime conventions. And this has happened uh, quite a few years ago. Haven't done it recently. Not sure if I wanna do it again, but if you are ever interested in wanting to know what this is like, then this is the video for you. So maybe afterwards you'll figure out if you wanna ever dip your toes into such an event, or if you wanna just steer completely away from it. There's three times I went con speed dating. The first one was at a small convention, the second was at a large convention, and the third time was at the same small convention. So the first time is pretty simple. It was at a small convention called UmiCon that doesn't exist anymore. And I just found out about it by looking at the panel guide. Yes, I actually read that thing. And I saw that this was happening and I was like, oh my god, this is gonna be so cringe, let's go! And I actually vlogged that convention so you can even like see how I was back then. So we go in there and it's uh, already almost started. So when we go in there, everyone looks at us and it's like really awkward. It's like when you're that kid that's late for school and like the whole class looks at you. So the way they had the setup was they had a row of chairs facing this way and a row of chairs facing this way. So all the girls sat on this side and all the boys sat on that side. And we sat there and the people that were in the guys row would be the ones that would move. And I didn't really particularly see anybody that I thought was like really cute. I was just here to just see how it would go. And I think I spoke to a 16 year old boy. I was 18 at the time. It was weird. Did they do ID check? I don't know. But it was primarily guys, not so much girls. I really couldn't tell you anything else about it. It was, it was what it was. We were timed, so basically um, how it works with speed dating is that you are with a person, you talk for a set number of minutes or so, bell goes off and you switch. For a lot of that, I was doing most of the talking. I was leading the conversation. If I didn't lead the conversation, the conversation wouldn't have even happened. That was that, it wasn't super eventful, but I did get my first experience there. Second experience is a doozy. So this was at Megacon, which is a big convention that happens in Orlando, and this was in Megacon 2013. I was cosplaying this like gender bend version of the Joker. I had a weird Joker face. So I like had the makeup and I had the outfit and I had the wig. I don't really know what I was going on with it, but I was into it and I felt, I felt, I felt right. <laughs> I felt right in the moment and that's all that matters. We are going around the convention and I see these posters for sci-fi speed dating and I'm like, okay. And it was 18 plus so they definitely checked ID and they made sure that there was adults that were there. Well, we had to sign up first. We had to like reserve a spot. And what I found out was that for guys, they had to pay $20 to get in there. For girls, they didn't have to, it was free. So um, the guys that went in there, you knew they paid $20 to be inside there. It's it's a time to line up, so we have the boys lined up on one side and the girls lined up on one side outside of the room. Then they open up the doors and they let all the girls go in first. So we go in there and it's a big room because there's a lot of people in this one. They have the chairs set up the same way and presumably the boys are the ones that's gonna be the ones that move. We all pick a seat. We get a speech from the guy that runs the event. So the guy that runs the sci-fi speed dating, he does this for a living. I don't know if it's a real full-time job, but he does this thing at a lot of places. And so he's done it at like New York Comic Con, I think, other Comic Cons. And he said that it feels very rewarding for him because he's bringing people together. He knows that the people that go to cons aren't normal, quote unquote. You know, it's hard looking for love. And he felt that by doing this event, it was really gonna bring the right type of people together. And he also swore that if anything bad were to happen to any of the participants in sci-fi speed dating, he would quit. He would not feel right continuing this event knowing that someone was violated or harmed because of the process. And I was like, okay, here we are. I feel like I can trust this guy. 
and he wore a cargo kilt. He also said that if anyone were to have an uncomfortable experience talking to someone, we were to do some sort of gesture. So the gesture was like kind of like stretching, like doing something like that. And then what he would do is he would stop it and interrupt and tell a story of some sort. And I think that once the event started, someone did propose. Like, I think there was a couple that met each other at the sci-fi speed dating event at a previous convention somewhere. They went to the panel before it started officially, before we started the speed dating process. And I think the guy just proposed to the person. And I was like, hello, here we are. I can't, I have no words. Like, this is my life that I'm, I'm watching these people. Wow. And so the guys poured into the room and I was just like, okay, we got a variety of people here. Different ages, different looks, different styles. Okay. So the way that the process worked was that um, we each were given a number. So I forgot what number I was. But let's say I was number 12. I had a sticker that said number 12. Then the guy would have a sticker that had a number as well. So if you liked someone, you would have to remember their number. I think we had a scratch piece of paper and a pencil to write it down on, but like, I don't remember. You had to remember their number. Then afterwards, there were going to be sheets of pieces of paper that had different people's number on it. So the girls were to go on one side, the guys were to go on another side. And if you saw the number of the person that you talked to, you were to leave your phone number on the piece of paper. The person would not know who that was. But basically, if you liked me, then you would go to the piece of paper that's at number 12 and you would write your phone number there. More on that later. So he explained all that to us and I was like, mm, all right. Well, then it's really awkward. So the guys just pick a seat in front of the girls and we start talking. I can sort of remember the people that I talked to. I didn't really feel a spark with anyone. Um, I also looked really funny, but the cool thing was that my identity was sort of hidden. So that was kind of mysterious and fun on my end, I guess maybe for the guy too. But I do remember there was um, one guy that had a lot of saliva and my friend Taylor said that he was spitting all over her. I didn't feel that, so I'm lucky. There was a Deadpool cosplayer that I was really hoping I could talk to, but it never happened. <laughs> there was like a couple people that were just like, you know, normal. Like I was like, are you, why are you even here? And you're like really normal. <laughs> there was some awkward moments when I was really just talking to the person waiting for the minute to end already. And yeah, some people just didn't say anything. And I felt kind of bad for them because I was like, man, you know, they're probably really happy to be here. They're probably really happy to be in the situation where they can just talk to a person. The person's right in front of them and they still feel too awkward too. Like, I really feel bad. I feel for them, you know? I really feel like if none of those guys are like, um, you know, alt-right or like really racist or sexist, they deserve love despite the awkwardness. So anyways, um, we're done. And I go to the pages and like it's really funny because the 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 girls were like they were like some of them really were excited with the people that they found they're like oh my god this guy or like two girls were bonding over the same guy i was like what they were like oh my god he was so cute and they're like yeah i was like all right but then it got really awkward again after that the host picked up the piece of paper from the girls and read off the numbers so the guys could individually come and pick up their piece of paper. So he would read off like, I don't know, one, two, three, four. So guy number one came up and picked his piece of paper. Guy number two picked up his piece of paper. And I thought that was really weird because um, there were some pieces of paper that had absolutely nothing on it. Even, it, not even just one, like there were some that just had nothing on there. And there were some that had like five or six or seven on there. Like there was some really sad guys that walked out of there and I felt really bad for them. And I thought that was really awkward to just like do that in front of everyone. Like there could have been a way where that didn't have to happen. And I felt really bad for those guys. So I'm just like, they were visibly disappointed that their paper had nothing on it. So then after all the guys were out of the room, the girls were able to go over to the guy's side and pick up their pieces of paper. And I think I got maybe two. <laughs> maybe. Or was it three? I feel like it was two. I don't know. I, it wasn't a lot. <laughs> oh my god. Taylor on the other hand probably got like six or seven or eight or nine. Like she got a lot. <laughs> I think I left my phone number for like two people and I did put that like I'm the joker person. I didn't get any text message from anyone from that. Um, or I 
actually, did I even get a text message? Because I also think I didn't. I feel like I did, but I didn't. I don't remember. Oh my god. I probably didn't, but I think I did. Regardless, nothing happened from that. Nothing happened from that, okay? We survived that. So sci-fi speed dating, that is like a brand, an event, a thing that goes around. So if you've been to it, let me know in the comment section below. And if that still exists, because this was a few years ago. The final speed dating occurrence was at the same small convention that I went to, and this was year 2015. So this one was 18 plus, they, it was written by two girls and they ID checked and they did deny a guy that was too old to be in there. He was maybe like, I don't know, 50 or 60. They did not let him come inside. And I was just like, all right. This one was a sausage festival, all right? This room was big. And I don't know how many, I'm really bad at guessing many people. Maybe there was 30, 40 guys in there, or maybe 25, 30. There was a lot of guys and maybe six girls. <laughs> that one was interesting because they made it sexual. There was games that happened. Um, it wasn't like crazy, but it was like, you know, somebody peeled a banana with only their mouth. And um, did that actually happen though? I honestly can't remember. I feel like that happened. Something happened with a banana. I know there was a banana involved. My friend got whipped, so there was that. There was actually some cute guys in there, like, okay. I did talk to someone and I was like, this guy's really cute. Wow, he's like, I like it. I like this a lot. And then I ended up adding him on Facebook afterwards. Then I found out that he lied about his age. And also he was really sexist. I ended up unfriending him. Okay, so it's getting dark as the story gets into the deep end. But basically, um, that one was a wild ride and it was an experience. I couldn't really vlog much, but it was weird. So, so during the speed dating thing, they did a condom demonstration as if people were really gonna do something. But I mean, nerds at cons get laid. I got laid up last year. The takeaway of all of this is I think that speed dating at a convention can be fun if you're a person that is aware of themselves and is someone that can handle themselves. I can imagine a situation where a very insecure person goes in there, meets someone that takes advantage of that insecurity and a bunch of bad things happen, um, you know, that can happen anywhere. But I can totally see that happening at a convention. There's weirdos that go to these things. Let's not deny it. There could be stalkers that you meet. You could very well run into people that become really, really excited of the fact that they're potentially getting some action for the first time ever or for the first time in a really long time. And they really become like obsessed and weird with you because like I said, there are some really weird people that go to conventions that have some issues that need to be resolved within themselves so they can become at peace and not take their issues out on other people. I can totally see all of that stuff happening, but if you think you're someone that isn't afraid to tell someone to back off, and that's for guys and girls and everyone in between, like, weird stuff can happen. Make sure you're over the age of 18, um, don't even try to lie about it, and make sure that you have a friend with you, if you can, and just let people know about your surroundings, like if your convention group, your family, or someone, just let them know that, hey, I'm going to this thing, whatever, I don't know, just... Try to be smart about it because it could really go wrong. I haven't experienced that. I don't know anyone that's experienced that, but it very well could. But as long as you realize that that could happen and you have an action plan on how to handle that type of situation, then I say go for it because also don't live your life in fear. If you want to go to these things and meet someone, hey, you might meet that someone. And I really believe that that's possible. Like, I really believe in the whole idea of just destiny and fate bringing two long distant soulmates together. Anyways, I really feel some way about that. I really think that can happen. Like, I really think that you could go to that and you could meet your true love and that'd be so cute. You met through anime conventions, sci-fi speed dating, whatever. Like, isn't that a great love story? I love it, I love it. And I'm feeling really excited about that. But anyways, that was my experience, con speed dating. So, like I said in the beginning of the video, leave a comment in the comment section below if you experienced this. 
Let me know if you are interested in trying this out, but maybe have some additional questions. I pretty much explain all there is to explain, but let me know. I think it's fun to talk about this stuff. And also, if you don't recommend Kong Speed Dating, please leave a comment in the comment section below. As this video fades into the darkness, I want to say thanks for watching, and you'll see me in the next video of mine you decide to click on. Bye!